going on guys back again with another video uh, made it here finally to Barstow California uh, today is Sunday got here uh, yesterday uh, midday yesterday uh, doing a 34 uh, we actually deliver there's a I'm at the Flying J here in Barstow and there's a shopping outlet mall basically just directly across the street and that's where we're going uh, so basically, uh, I'm just going to give you a quick tour of what the load is, uh, how much it weighs, uh, so on and so forth, how I secured it, and then we'll get a quick glimpse of the truck, kind of give you a walk around the truck. I'm trying to stay back here a little bit because it's kind of noisy up front because everybody's eyes on their trucks. So we'll, let's get started. So these are, uh, when I originally uh, picked them up, I thought they were like um, holes for under the ground or something. But come to find out, they are going to be the legs for a, uh, a new sign they're putting out for the outlet mall. So, uh, I think they're roughly, I think they told me they're like 40 feet long or something like that, something somewhere in there. Uh, I don't know the exact diameter. I, they just said on the bills, I'll have to look. Uh, but uh, load weighs total of 33,000 pounds. Um, first time I ever hauled a load similar to how it's the way it's set up. Uh, actually paid, paid, pulled uh, really well. I was kind of worried because when you look in your mirror, it seems like the load is shift. It's shifting on one side, but it's not. Uh, they actually did a really good job loading it. Uh, but uh, I've got roughly 50,000 pounds worth of securement on the load. Uh, it's about 10 straps. Uh, I started back here. All my straps have uh, half twists in them because I didn't want the wind to make my straps come loose. And that's a big pointer for any guys who's gonna come out here and start fly bedding. I highly suggest that you have, when you uh, loads like this, or even short loads, tall loads, what you're gonna do, I highly suggest putting half twists in it, which means when it's down here on the, the load, you know, it's straight, and it has a half twist in it as it goes up and it goes back straight again. What that does, that keeps the wind, when the wind hits a strap, the strap doesn't shake. And you'll see that on loads where the strap is shaking, you know, making a lot of bracket. That's because they didn't put a half twist in it. And it's a big tool, or a big, uh, not tool, but a good thing to do on really tall loads. It not only protects your straps, but also protects the product that you're hauling. And usually, your straps won't come loose. Uh, wind, no matter how tight you make your straps, wind, if it's a tall load, you can clean it as tight as you want. Wind will eventually work those straps loose. I mean, that's just the way it is. Uh, so anyway, I have one strap here. It runs across, uh, and I have twist on both sides. Here, because it's a step deck, I have no pocket winch here, so I put my pocket winch, or I have no uh, normal winch here, so I put a pocket winch here, and a half twist like the other ones. And then this is, and then uh, if you notice, also another thing I did is like this strap here is pulling from the other side, and this strap here is pulling from this side. Big thing to always do. And then. Uh, then I started here, pull on this side, half twist up and over. And then one thing I did do, I may not have to do it, but it made me feel better. Um, I did because I didn't have enough long enough four inch straps. I took a two inch strap and I threw it, uh, brought the hook this way from the bottom, threw it over the top, and basically wrapped the two pipes together uh, with this two inch strap. I know the two inch strap doesn't have as much. Uh, hold down capabilities as the four inch but it's better than nothing so let me feel better so i put one there and i also have one right there and then like this strap is pulling this way with the half twist in it in the back or that one i'm sorry this one's pulling from the opposite side this one's pulling this side back and forth back and forth and what that does is it keeps the you know the biggest when it comes to flatbed the biggest thing is gravity it's something you always fight against so all highways on the road are angled to the right so that way water will kind of is supposed to run off well if all your straps are pulling to the right you're already working with gravity so if the load wants to go you're already fighting your know, gravity's already trying to pull to that side your straps are pulling with gravity so the chances of your load shifting is higher now i'm not saying that my load still couldn't shift that it can still shift it can still move it can still come out of whack because of my, it doesn't I mean, if the load's gonna move, it's gonna move. The best you can do is just strap as best you can, keep your eyes on your load, check your securement, so on and so forth. Uh, but this is something that could help 
help you from your load shifting. That's, it could help. Um, I'll go this side because I think a lot of people don't want to be on camera. Uh, so, that's something that I always do. So, I'll go from one side to the next. And um, so I got all my shirts pulling this side, and once this side's pulling this side. So that's something I always do is, you know, swap your, your straps from one side to the other. So that way it kind of um, puts your load into a bind, okay, so to speak, to keep it from, hopefully keep it from moving. Um, I'm not sure why they, uh, this might sound stupid to me, but I'm not sure why they did this, but uh, if you see this one's kind of set back some, and this one's forward, but it actually worked out really well. I, I'm, I'm assuming just because it had balanced out, excuse me, it balanced out the weights. Um, the rear end was at 20, 27,000 pounds. The front was at 21,000 pounds, so it really wasn't that off that bad. Uh, because I'm in California, I had to have my TAMs closed. Uh, with being a 53, you got your TAMs closed. Once I leave the state, I can leave, open them back up. But anyway, like I was saying, I have 10 straps on here total of 50,000 pounds worth of securement and then on the uh, it runs about 50,000 pounds of securement a little bit more and then I had uh, this stack of steel now this small stack these straps here on these big pipes never came loose never even moved I never even had to tighten them up they, they stay tight the whole 1500 miles never moved that little pile of stuff right there gave me the hardest time the whole way up here i kept tightening and tightening and tightening and tightening and finally what i ended up having to do is they had that small steel set on small pieces of wood like this so what i did was i took the wood out and just laid the let the steel sit directly straight on the deck tighten it down and it never moved again uh, they warmed it on the wood so that way the forklift could get up underneath and pick it up uh, but I just cut my winch bar to give me some leverage and I picked it up on either side got the wood out from underneath it And that's just something I had to do and you know, they'll have to figure it out once they unload me in the morning uh, It's just something I had to do on my own uh, Just for the sake of, of everyone around me and myself uh, So that's what I did other than that the load rode great uh, Really good load uh, paid really well um, I really enjoyed it. It was really fun to load to do. Uh, the previous driver, whoever dropped this trailer, uh, I guess must have had a blowout and Prime's policy is we're supposed to keep the, the blowout so they can inspect it and possibly try to reuse it. So uh, he had to have the trash rod to strap it down, just threw one strap across it and held it down. Um, I will show you one thing here though, before we start talking about the truck. See, it's really loud up here because he's idling. But one thing that I did not like or didn't really make me feel comfortable about this load was this dunnage. Um, if you see, all they did was they put screws in it. There's nothing holding, the only thing that's holding these two pieces together is this here. They got a screw here and a screw there. And then same thing over there, over here. And here, they went as far as they put this metal here, and all they did was put some nails, sorry, put some nails right there. I'm not a big fan of that. Uh, I really didn't like it. I mean, I know it works. I didn't really like it, but it is what it is. And then they put little blocks on either side so the pipe could move side to side. And then this big behemoth here, like I said before, they just put this block here, and this block is serving two purposes. One is holding these three together, but it's also a block here to keep this from going moving towards us. And this here is basically keeping this from moving. It's, uh, it's screwed down into this wood, and then it's screwed into this wood, and it keeps this wood from moving side to side. And then they do the same thing here, here, and then on the bottom there. I would have done completely differently, in my opinion, if you're a steel company, you could have just made steel braces myself, that was just me, but, you know, it is what it is. But, uh, other than that, that was the only thing I didn't like about the load, uh, and besides that the small second still up front, they gave me some trouble, other than that, the load rode great, it pulled really nice, 
So, you know, let's move on to the truck and uh, I'll show you around the truck and we'll take a look at that. All right, so on the truck, uh, excuse the APU that's running, I'll kind of stay back here while I'm talking. Uh, the, ape, the, the truck is a, a 2019 Peterbilt 579 automatic transmission 10 speed. Uh, it's technically not an automatic transmission, but it is, but it isn't at the same time. It's still a manual transmission. All the difference is instead of having a stick and me shifting it, it has solenoids that shifts it for me. So it's still, I can convert it back to an actual stick shift manual just by putting a stick in it and pulling the solenoids out. Simple as that. Uh, it's a, the color on it is uh, galaxy blue. Uh, I'm a big Seahawks fan, even though I'm originally from North Carolina. Uh, born and raised near uh, Asheville, North Carolina, in a small town, Murphy, uh, small town called Murphy, North Carolina. Uh, that's where I was born and raised at. Uh, however, I met my wife uh, eight years ago, and I moved to Seattle. I've been up there ever since. Fell in love with the city, um, and I know I'm rambling, I'm trying to give you the background. Uh, fell in love with the city. Um, never was really a big football fan until I moved there. Uh, I played football in high school. And what turned me on to being a fan was in my hometown, when we had hometown games, all the stores around me, because we lived in a small town of 800 people, all the town, all the stores around us were closed for the day, for the night, or, you know, closed to come watch the game. Uh, and in Seattle, every Friday, and anybody who's from Seattle who watches this or, or, or whatever, we have what we call Blue Friday. Season or no season, every Friday, everyone wears full-on Seahawk gear, face paint, I mean, go the full shebang to represent and back our team. Um, our stadium has never been not sold out every game. Uh, we, we are diehard fans. Uh, and that really reminded me of home of how much we back our, our high school football team. So that really made me think of home and, and it just turned me into being a fan fell in love with what we stand for, fell in love with the team and how much we never give up to the last minute. And so I became a fan. And also, um, not to get all kind of, you know, lovey-dovey or whatever. When I think of Seattle, I think of everything that Seattle has given me. Uh, I, I was the first person in my family to graduate college and I was able to do that in Seattle. Um, I have a degree in criminal justice. I was gonna be a police officer. I came out here to drive a to, to pay off my student loans, fell in love with it, and now I'm an owner operator. Uh, also, I became a father in Seattle. I have two uh, stepdaughters, uh, Kinsey and Kaylee, and it was because of Seattle. I have those. In my, I have them in my life. I have a grandchild now in my life, Kingston, and it's because of Seattle that he's in my life. And then, most importantly, I met my wife, and that's the basic, the biggest thing for me is my wife, and it's because of Seattle that I met her. So that is also why. You know, I'm a big Seahawks. The Seahawks represent Seattle. Seattle represents everything my life is today. So that's why I'm a big Seahawks fan. Uh, so now, now that I got that kind of explained out of the way, I'll kind of walk around the truck. Uh, these are our headache racks. Um, I'm sure you've probably seen it in my old truck, but this is the new headache rack. Uh, same thing as my old one. I got my eight foot guns back up here. Uh, that's my antenna from my previous video. If you watched it, that's where I mounted my antenna right there. Still have my old ladder. The only thing I did differently, uh, before I get too close to AP so you can still hear me, is this box here, I have all my snow chains in. I put that there, because I was tired of having a plastic box there. That box is more out of my way. It's also a step, I can step on and help get my tarps up top. So it's, it's, a, you know, it's a multi-use tool to have. Um, on this truck, we have the Tri-Pack Evolution APU. Right now, it's cooled down, it's like 75 and it's freezing in my truck. Uh, my wife really likes the cold. So it really, you know, it works really, really well. Uh, the blue on this truck is Galaxy Blue. It's the name of the color. They didn't have a true Seahawk color blue like I wanted. So the closest thing I just like, I basically, I'm not gonna lie, I told the lady that we uh, ordered the trucks from. I can't think of her name right now. I'm sorry if you see this. Uh, I told her, pick your favorite blue and that's what we'll go with. She really liked the Galaxy Blue, so that's what we went with. Um, I have the chicken lights here. It does say Seattle Seahawks here. I got the I got the chicken light package. Uh, chicken lights, chrome package, 
um, pro package and I also got the deer guard paint uh, color match for the truck so it's color match uh, the chrome package comes with the chrome bumper chrome mirrors chrome mirror up there and then the chrome visor um, like I said it's 2019 uh, chrome uh, grill I got my Seahawks flag up front or my tag up front uh, LED LED headlights um, standard fog lights standard headlight uh, high beams um, let's see what else uh, of course I had to get my wheel covers for it uh, I try to keep rubber the best as I can it really works really well uh, it cleans up really nice I really enjoy it it has the the Packard uh, Packard engine in it uh, great truck really works well I mean I just love the truck really love the truck uh, like I said it's the Seahawks right here and then the biggest piece of all is my Seahawks head on the side so if you ever see me don't hesitate to wave or talk to me come up and say hey take pictures wherever you choose whatever whatever you want to do uh, I did get the chrome quarter fenders um, these airlines I love these airlines these airlines actually came with the truck um, let's see to see what else we can talk about here oh another thing i did do is i got the steps painted black usually they're like this this ugly non-polished chrome it just looks hideous uh so to go with the black plastic of the, the the mirrors and the mirror there and the black here and the black around the door handle the door handles here i got these painted black to kind of go with kind of go with the theme kind of keep it going uh, a lot of people say it kind of looks like a football helmet now because it's got the Seahawks color, the blue Seahawks, you know, blues with the helmet and then the black, so it kind of goes with it a little bit. So it, it kind of worked out. Um, on these trucks, they do have the big door here. Get my little doggies up stop. And then I have my little storage here. Excuse the mess. Uh, I have my water, all my tools, my winch bar, everything is in there. Um, on the other side, just a little door kind of access the, the box for the APU. Uh, this does have the DEF. DEF is installed as an injector there. Uh, side box. Uh, the side box here is a lot different than the one in my old truck. The old truck had a small door. It has a bigger door. Uh, on the older peaks and the mid-roof Freightliners, the older Freightliners, the box comes way comes way back up in here. But because these these tanks on these gear belts, the, the fuel tank is shifted back some, so the box had to be smaller, but I still, I'm able to fit a lot of straps in there. Uh, I'll show you a little bit here. So, I mean, and like I looks a lot of mess, but I can fit uh, 30 plus straps in there and still have room, so it works out really well. Here's a close up of the box. I basically just bought this box at Lowe's. I think I paid, uh, hundred something bucks I think 120 bucks uh, I could I'm in once I take the truck home I'm gonna drill and put some I drill it straight to the headache rack which I don't have to have these straps here but the straps work perfectly fine uh, I have two extra pieces of dunnage I keep right there um, I got the, the pretty badass headache rack I mean uh, catwalk I really like um, these will be changed uh, soon I may go with the 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 lit, the lit um, mud flat hangers with my brake lights and blinkers will be over here, instead of in the center. Uh, of course, I've got you know the the center caps here. Here, uh, I just had the truck washed uh, yesterday at the Blue Beacon. It's directly over there. They hand dry everything. They put tire shine on. So they, I had to make sure I was clean that while I'm here in California, while I'm representing. Um, other than that, yeah, it's pretty much the truck. I mean, it's pretty easy. I mean, pretty basic truck. Um, like I said, I really love the truck. Um, I love everything about it. Um, just, I just love the truck. It's a beautiful truck, in my opinion. I'm not trying to you know, sound conceited, but I really love the truck. Oh, and then also on the hood, I also got here, I got uh, 12 Seattle put on the hood, because we are the 12th man. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's the truck. I, mean, I really like it. Um, hopefully you guys like it. Um, I don't want to keep rambling on, so thank you for watching. Hit the like button, subscribe if you'd like. If you have any questions, comments, don't he hesitate to comment. If you have any requests, don't hesitate. Reach out to me on Facebook, Instagram, wherever you'd like. Stephen Gamble, S-T-E-P-H-E-N-G-A-M-B-L-E. 
in my name. So look me up on Facebook, Instagram, whatever. And uh, thanks for watching, and uh, see you on the next one. We'll try to do a video by loading in the morning. So see you then. Peace.